sentiment study with one of the most popular FX pairs on our end. Hello, everyone. Monty here, Market Analyst of IG. And it's about time we take a look at USD JPY, or the dollar against the Japanese yen. Plenty been happening. Uh, and of course, we had the 150 red line, the anticipated policymaker intervention, Bank of Japan's uh, yield curve control program tweak. And we got the underlying yield spread differentials. Of course, when it comes to sentiment, well, we got clients, IG client sentiment and CO2 speculators on opposite ends. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, IG client sentiment. These are week on week changes. Extreme sell at the start of last week at 80%, still in extreme short territory, dropping a bit to 78%. There was a week on week small change in price. We are going to pull up the platform later in this video. Take a look at COT speculators, so extreme buy. Uh, although they have pulled back to 79%, but almost an almost exact opposite will be got for client sentiment. There was an increase in both yen longs as well as yen short positions, but in percentage terms, resulting in a pullback in terms of overall buy buys, but still very much in extreme buy territory. But we need to take a look at how they got there and what they've been doing all this time. So let's go ahead and pull up, start with the daily chart. I'm going to get to the weekly chart where it gets far more interesting. We'll take a look at the daily chart. You see some moves where there have been cases where it might be very enticing to sort of range trade some of these moves. I mean, it is a it is a, a, a bull average situation, although the technical overview, I wouldn't classify as that just because of how many underlying factors are and the fact that there were a significant 150, or in this case, near the 150 line. Let's go ahead and plot sentiment on top of it. And this is corresponding to the left axis. So the, the candlestick chart goes to, to, the, to the right. You look at the left axis when it comes to sentiment, these dotted lines. The red dotted line, 50, as always, 50-50. Whenever you see a dotted, the green or blue dotted line above, it means they're majority buy. Whenever you see below, they're majority sell. Why is that the case? You take a look at the green dotted, for example. Right now, we showed uh, in the previous screen, there are 79%. So 79% buy, so majority buy. You take a look at the IG client sentiment. They had dropped, uh, but still in extreme um, uh, sell territory. And uh, as a result, they are minority buy, so around uh, 20%. And that means that they're majority sell, or when they when it reaches 78% and above, it's extreme sell. So that's the idea over here. Now, usually, usually, whenever you have movement like this, you're, you usually see a lot more movement when it comes to the blue dotted line because uh, IG clients are going to try and trade some of that volatility. Uh, you know, okay, fine. There is a little bit of this when it went up. You did see client sentiment dip further into extreme sell territory. That's the 86% that I talked about. And that's just when it dropped. You did see some of those fresh shorts st start to come out. But a lot of times you'll see a lot more action and usually a little bit closer to the red line. So the dotted red line. So what exactly is going on over here? You're going to have to shift up and take a look at the weekly chart to have a much better idea. So every candle here represents a week of price action. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put sentiment on top of it. Take a look at IG client sentiment, the blue dotted line. So initially there were these attempts at range trading some of these moves. You had, you had uh, price dip, you had some of the, the bias go back up as uh, shorts get enticed into closing out and some longs initiate. You had this move up over here, which went all the way up to here and you saw the sentiment eventually start to move further into moving to heavy sell territory. And then afterwards you had price, this, this significant uh, uh, tracement over here that helps shorts get out, longs initiate. But then once again, once again, as Price goes up this time around. This time you see it going, going down and reaching into extreme sell territory. What about when it comes to COT speculators? Throughout this period of time, they were holding majority buy bias. There was this period when, it, when you had this dip over here, you did see them drop into uh, roughly, you would say, heavy buy territory from what was extreme buy. But then afterwards, especially on this move, did this pullback over here and then moving up over here went into extreme buy and pretty much stayed stuck in extreme buy territory. Now, the thing is, is that this chart's not going that further back, but I'll tell you where they did shift. I'm going to go ahead and shift, uh, take a look at IG's uh, trading platform, and we're going to look here once again on the weekly chart, but we want to go a little bit further back. And you look at some of the data for CO2 speculators, when they actually shifted from majority sell was back in March of 2021. So if we're going to go ahead and, and take it back sig significantly further, all the way to around here, and you can see that that was when price was around the 109 to 110 range. Area. Let's make it easy and just say 110 is where they shifted from uh, majority short to heavy buy. They went right away into heavy buy territory. And you can see over here, they've got a very, very big margin from 110 all the way up to here. They've got a big margin to work with. So this does not mean that automatically you ought to think, oh, you know, guarantee that's going to go up further. Uh, the Paris price, there are plenty of other factors involved. Um, they a lot of times like to go with the, the momentum and they usually like to, to increase. So you'll see that, that their bias was increasing as it was going up. 
when there was a significant pullback, uh, they did start to pull back a little bit. I, the, the numbers that we saw where they dropped back into heavy buy territory was around December. So you could see that they dropped. When this happened over here, you did see some of those longs start to take profit. But you can see that they've just got a big margin to work with for those that started at 110. I'm not saying that they, they're all still there from, from, from 110, but, but it gives you an idea in terms of how much leeway they have. So even if it pulls back, it's not going to net translate into significant loss for them. So what about when it comes to uh, uh, IG client sentiment? The idea behind here is that, you know, 150 is seen as, has been seen as, is still relatively seen as, as, as the policymaker intervention, or at the very least, something that's going to push either policymakers into intervening or at the Bank of Japan into having some sort of tweak uh, when it comes to the yield curve control program. They did, in fact, have a tweak, but what's, also what's been happening is we've seen a big pullback when it comes to uh, Japanese Treasury yields just because of the whole, uh, what's been happening last week in terms of bad news is good news, Fed seen as less hawkish in the next phase because of the figures that have been coming out. So overall, this is going to be a situation where if this line does hold indeed, and, and we do see any sort of pullback, it is going to offer quite a significant amount when it comes to, to IG clients who, for the most part, you can say the initiation happened at around uh, the chart that I showed you before, at around the 130. So it was around this level over here, we saw them go back into buy territory. So there is some uh, some room, but at the end of the day, managing to, to some extent, range trade their way out of some of those uh, heavier sell positions right over here. So that's about it from our end. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck out there.